Hey, and welcome to this special viewer request edition of Making. We're making a black hole, entirely in Adobe After Effects. We're going back in time to the first tutorial I posted on this channel, before the annoying cartoon, background music and stupid captions. In the first tutorial I showed how to use mathematics to convert a resoundly 2D effect, bulge, and force it to react like a 3D effect. Now at the time I kinda assumed everyone would then use Trapcode Particular to make a swirling disk of clouds and plasma. Of course, that's because I have Trapcode Particular and I assumed you would all have that too. So when requests started coming in for a complete tutorial, I didn't really see the benefit. But, you know, I listened. Eventually. I'm going to spend most of this tutorial creating the accretion disk, then I'm going to take the concepts of the original tutorial and apply them to the disk. I'll add in some detail after that too. A couple of things that came up in the comments too, one is that some of you prefer CC flow motion to bulge. But with bulge's taper, I think I get a closer look. Feel free to disagree with me and tell me so in the comments below. YouTuber ScienceClickN built their own black hole plugin for After Effects. The channel's creator, Alessandro Roussel, posted a second comment with their link to their website all about their plugin. But YouTube intercepted it as spam and I only spotted it about a month ago. Sorry Alessandro. Let's just jump right in. Here's a 1080p comp and the first thing we need is a null object. Go to Layer, New, Null Object. Make it a 3D layer and name it Null1 for now. Now, create a new solid, make it comp sized and click OK. Name this disk or accretion disk if you want to sound all sciency. Now let's add my preset which links CC Particle World to a 3D null. If you've not seen that video, click on the link. I need the views. But if you're not going to do that, add CC Particle World and then use the expressions in the description below and copy them into the producer's X, Y, and Z values. Now that I've added the effect, I'm going to rename the null one object to black hole null. I'm going to hang other effects and solids off black hole null, so even though it's in the center of my comp, I still have its coordinates when I need them. Next I'm going to go to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control. I'm going to select this effect, hit enter and rename this to Particle Amount, and drag it above CC Particle World. And I'm going to set this to 2000, and now let's rename CC Particle World to Dust. Using the expression from my star fields tutorial, I'll hold Alt and click on the birth rate stopwatch. This lets me add a value for the particles for the first frame, and then the birth rate drops to zero afterwards, and I can tweak the slider as I need to. Set longevity to 100, and in producer set X and Z radiuses to zero, and Y to 0.01. In physics, set the type to twirly. This lets us have some moving clouds in the disk. Set velocity and gravity to zero, Extra will determine the width of the disk. Set it to 0.9. And Extra Angle will set the rotation speed and direction. Set it to minus 5. In Particle, set the type to Darkened and Faded Sphere. The sizes to 0.4 and the size variation to 100%. But drop Max Opacity to 9%. Expand Opacity Map and making sure the Select tool is selected, fill in the space. And set matching dark browns for the birth and death colours. Now making sure the effect is highlighted, go to Edit, Duplicate to Copy Dust, and rename this effect Plasma. We're making the glowy part next, but I'll also be using the glow effect. So it's probably not plasma, but Kyrgyzat is that way if you want scientific accuracy. In physics, let's make a few changes. Set extra to 0.4 and extra angle to minus 10. So we have a smaller disk and slightly faster particles. In particle, set the sizes to 0.2. And set the birth and death colors to a very light orangey color with a bit of gray. Set transfer mode to add, and in extra, check the composite with original checkbox. And fiddle with the random seed to get the particles in a different space to the dust. 
Now the dust is looking a little strong. Let's edit the birth rate expression for that effect and add a divide by 2. Better. Now duplicate plasma and rename this to particles. I'm going to add some smaller particles. In producer, set all radiuses to 0. In physics, set extra to 0 0.5 and extra angle to minus 7. In particles, set the sizes to 0 0.03. Drop size variation to 0% and max opacity to 75%. And set the colors to a whitish yellow. Change the type to faded sphere. It's really hard to see what's going on. Let's go to Layer, New, Camera, and use the Unified Camera tool to take a look at what we've got. There we go. I think the particles are too visible here. They kind of dominate. So let's drag them above Dust and uncheck Composite with Original. Oh, and alter the Random Seed here too. It's not visible now, so expand the Dust's Extras and check Composite with Original. Cool. Now in the original tutorial, I made a donut with two circular masks. I can't cut a hole here, but I can fake it with a circular solid above the particles. Create a new solid, make it a thousand by a thousand pixels, and black. Click and hold on the mask tool to select the elliptical mask, and then double click on it to add a circular mask to our new solid. Name this solid Donut hole. Make it 3D and parent it to the black hole null. Now hit R to expose the rotation properties and rotate it to 90 degrees on the X axis. And scale it down so that it fits inside the glowy bit. About 35%. I'll move it in the timeline to be just above the particle solid. Okay, now go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And make sure it's above both Donut Hole and Accretion Disk. Name this Distortion. And now go to Effect, Distort, Bulge. Set the height to 4, and then click on the stopwatches for the horizontal and vertical radiuses and the center. Select the layer on the timeline and tap U to expose these keyframes. Use the vertical radius pick whip to link it to the horizontal one. And then in Bulge Center, hold Alt and click on the stopwatch and add this expression. If you want to know more about what this expression does, I cover this in both the original black hole video, but also in this Just the Tip tutorial. In short, this will keep the center of the bulge attached to the black hole null. Now in the original tutorial, I showed how the radius was inversely proportional to the distance to the camera, and I could use a constant to make this an expression. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to reset my camera's coordinates so that it's a thousand pixels from black hole null, and adjust the radius until it is most of the way in the glowy bit. I make this to need to be about 900 pixels. And now to check, I'll set my camera to 2,500 pixels distant, and it's about 360. Taking a look at the equation, my constant is radius times distance. So 900 times 1,000. 900,000. Rearrange to check with the other measurements, 900,000 divided by 2,500 is indeed 360. Cool. So our bulge expression is 900,000 divided by, and then use this icon to access the expressions library, and go to vector math, and choose length 0.1.2. Double click to select the text 0.1, and use the pick whip to select the camera's position, and then do the same for 0.2 and the black hole null's position. Awesome. Bulge is doing this very weird thing in the middle, where the event horizon should be. Let's hide that. Select Donut Hole and go to Edit, Duplicate. Rename this Event Horizon and drag it above the Adjustment Layer. And hit R so that we can set X Rotation to 0. And then go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient and set it to face the camera and then scale it up to hide the interior bits. 
about 40% should do it. Now to make the forward edge of the accretion disc. In the original video I duplicated the disc and added a mask. If I was using Trapco in particular, I could set the event horizon solid as an obscuration layer. I can't do either with CC Particle World, but what I can do is use a track mat. So I'm going to make a 3D track mat. To do this, duplicate our donut hole again and drag it above event horizon and go to layer, solid settings and make it white and click OK. Scale this up until it covers the entire disc. And then create a new black solid, at least comp sized. Make it 3D and see how it intersects with the white circle. And now hold control and select both the new solid and the white disc. Right click and choose pre-compose. And then click the collapse transformations icon so the entire pre-comp acts like it is in 3D space still. And don't look now, but we've created a 3D luma mat. Select our accretion disk and duplicate it, and drag it to be below the pre-comp, and use the toggle at the bottom to access the track mat controls, and set accretion disk 2 to luma mat. If I solo it for a moment, you can see we've hidden the back half of the disk. The edge is a little sharp though, so go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast box blur, and set the blur radius to 25. Hmm. The center looks wrong. Select Donut Hole again and go to Edit, Copy. Then double click to enter the precomp and change the view to top so we can see. And then go to Edit, Paste. And switching back, it's a little small. So go back to the precomp and scale it up a bit and feather the mask. It's dealer's choice here. I ended up with a scale of about 62% with a feathered mask of 100 and drop the expansion down to around minus 100. Next, let's add some glow. Create a new adjustment layer. Make sure it's above everything. Name it glow. And then go to effect, stylize, glow. Set the threshold to 70%, the radius to 65, and crank up the influence to three. Add a second glow effect. Set this threshold to just 15%, but set the radius to 500, so we get that soft bleeding look. It does make the dust clouds look a bit fluffy though. Create a new black solid and drag it down to the bottom of the timeline. We'll add stars later, but I'm going to use a layer with multiply and it looks weird without a background. Duplicate our donut hole again. Drag this to just below the glow adjustment layer and scale it up until it covers the disc. Rename this detail. Solo it. And now go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Turbulent Noise. Set the type to Dynamic, Invert it, set the contrast to 700 and the brightness to minus 20. In Transform, set the scale to 75, and then holding Alt, click on the Offset Stopwatch. And in the Expressions area, type Square Bracket, Time times 25, Comma, Time times minus 10. Close square bracket. This will move our noise across the solid and upwards, quite slowly but enough for our purposes. Now go to effect, distort, polar coordinates. Set the type to rectipolar and max out the amount. That looks weird. Double click on the layer and use a rectangular mass to create a box with a gap at the top half and sides. Feather this mask and back in the comp you can see the polar coordinates have cut out that sharp line. And now set transform mode to multiply and unsolo it. And drop the opacity to about 60%. That gives us this cool detailed look without having to create dozens more particle layers. Cool. Last couple of touches. Duplicate event horizon. Double click on it and draw a circular mask from the center. Holding shift and control will help you. Delete the original mask and back in the comp go to Effect, Video Copilot, Saver. Set the preset to Solar. Set the color to match the glow we're getting. In Customize Core, set the type to Layer Masks. And set the size to 1.5.
drop core distortion amount to 3 and set alpha mode to mask core. Expand render settings and set the composite settings to transparent. And it doesn't have to be exact, but scale it up so that the ring is about the same dimensions as Event Horizon. Now the particles kind of click into place about 10 seconds in, and we're done, just out of Starfield. I have a tutorial on how to make a lovely 361. There's more videos in the Making Space series. Make my day and click subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, click it again just to make sure. No, wait, don't do that.